Right here, there's a 10 millimeter bolt. Use a 10 millimeter socket. Take this off. And that's holding the PCM down. Take that bolt out. Then you should be able to grab the computer and slide it towards the outside of the vehicle and then slide it up. There should be a bracket on there. This vehicle doesn't have it. Disconnect the negative terminal. Just use a 10 millimeter socket. And slide that off, out of the way. Take this hose off right here. You can just pop it off pops out like that and then if you can it should slide out right there this one happens to be broken set that aside and take this snorkel off right here use a straight blade screwdriver loosen up the worm clamp right above the throttle body loosen up that worm clamp the same straight blade screwdriver and we'll just grab right here slide up slide that off and it's pushed in by two grommets in the back. Take this cover off, just loosen up the cap. Just pull up on the cover. This grommet's holding that on. Put the cover back on just so nothing falls in there. Disconnect the connector right here. There's a little lock. Slide that up. Take these two 10 millimeter bolts out. Use a 10 millimeter socket. And grab the air box and slide it out. Disconnect the connectors. Just push down on the tab, slide it off. Right there and right there. It's for the VVT solenoid valves. Pop those off to the side. Then the coil packs. There's these little locks. You have to slide those back. If you need to, you can use a screwdriver or a pick. Slide those back. Once you slide those back, you can push down and slide off the connector. Do the same with the other ones. We can pull these coils out. Use a 10 millimeter socket. Take that bolt out and grab the coil, slide it up. Do the same for the other ones. Now we're going to take this hose out of the way. Just use a screwdriver, just pop under here. This is the retainer and then when that's popped up, slide this back just like that. And we'll just take this out of the way, disconnect the connector here. And slide this hose off the same way. Just push on that. And then there's a little tab right here. If you take a screwdriver, just pry that tab out. Then you can just slide this solenoid completely off and out of the way. Around the perimeter of the valve cover, there's these bolts. You want to take those out using a 10 millimeter socket. There is a hidden one down here. You're going to have to take that one out as well. those bolts out. There is little guides in there. If those guides come out with the bolts, make sure you put them in, put those back in. Little plastic guides. And grab the valve cover, very carefully slide it up. If you have to, you can pry underneath a little bit. Just be careful, don't damage it. And slide it off. Take this guide off right here. Use a 10 millimeter socket. Take these two bolts out.
Be careful, don't drop them. Slide those out. Grab that, slide it off. I'm taking this bracket off. It's going to be easier to access the timing chain tensioner back here, but it's not necessary that you have to do it. I'm going to use a 13 millimeter socket. There's two bolts coming in from the back side. Once you loosen them up, you should be able to do it by hand. If any wires are attached to that, disconnect the wires from it. Take the lug nuts off. Use a 22 millimeter socket. Pull the wheel off. Remove this cover. There's some push pins. Just use a trim tool. Get under those push pins. Slide that cover off. Take the serpentine belt off. You can use a belt removal tool or just a 3 8 ratchet will work. And there's a little cutout on the tensioner. Take the tension off the belt and then slide it off over near the AC compressor. You should be able to loosen up the tension. the ratchet off and slide the belt off the crank pulley, off the tensioner, and off the alternator. And slide it down. Take the harmonic balancer off or the crank pulley. You need a 21 millimeter socket. Take this bolt out. You want to replace this bolt when you do this job. Now pull the pulley off, it should slide right off. You shouldn't need a puller for it. Now you can access the tensioner bolt through here. Use a 15 millimeter socket with an extension. Loosen up the bolt. Grab the tensioner and it slides right out. Now we're going to remove this bolt right here. Use a 13 millimeter socket. And this bolt's a little bit longer. There's 10 millimeter bolts all around the perimeter of the front timing cover. We're going to take all those out. Use a 10 millimeter socket. These four 10 millimeter bolts over this little cover, those you do not need to remove. Um, that will come off with the big part of the cover. And some of these you just can't get off with an air ratchet. And pull that last bolt out. Double check. Make sure there's no extra bolts in there. It all looks good. You can use a small pry bar right here. There's a little area where you can pry. You can try to get underneath here. Let's pry this out. Oh, some oil might come out. That's okay. Make sure you have a drain bucket underneath. And slide this off. Just slide the cover down. Just like that. You want to take this gasket off. Right here, just slide it off. The only problem is at the top, there is a piece that goes around the engine mount or the engine bracket right there. At this point, we can just cut this little piece. You can use some type of tin snips and trim it. So cut that. 
and then slide the gasket down. There's a shim or a little uh, washer right here. If you use a pick, or you could even use a magnet, and just grab this and slide this off. Don't forget to put this back when you put it all back together. Now, if you have a special tool like this, you can turn the crank. You can put this on. There's a slot right there, and you can see where the kingpin is. You just line that up, and then you can turn that. The only problem is this one's too big. So there's many different sizes for this. Most of the time, you're probably not going to have the right size. So what I do is take a bolt, take the crank bolt that you took off, and just thread this in. Then we have the ability to turn the crankshaft with the bolt. Just use the 21 millimeter socket. Once it's tight, and then the crankshaft will move nice and easy. And you can see where that kingpin is right there. You want to twist the engine. And now we can see the timing mark right there. That's actually for the balance shafts over here and here. Get that lined up. And then the mark for the crank is right here. Now that's going to line up with a mark on the chain when it's all timed up. So in the end. But I like to get it in at least base timing or at least top dead center for the first um, cylinder before I take anything apart, and then it's easier to put everything back together. So the upper sprockets are not lined up properly. Um, we have this timing tool that goes on here, and that's gonna make sure that all the timing is correct. Um, the only problem is these cams are not in the right spot. There should be a little arrow right here and over here, and they're not, so they're 180. So we need to turn the crank over one more time. You always want to turn the engine clockwise also. Don't ever turn it backwards. And that's good. Right there. And you can see that's the arrow that we were looking for up top. Right there and right there. And if you look at the timing mark that is on the timing sprocket on the, the crank side um, that goes up to the upper cams, that's lined up with this timing mark right here. Now, not that other one. So that's where we want to be right now. It's perfect. Now we have to remove the tensioner, and it's on the outside of the block in the back. I'm going to use a 32 millimeter socket. Break it free first. Once you loosen it up, you should be able to do it by hand. Loosen that up, and it slides right out. I'm going to use a 24 millimeter wrench and just put this on the cam very carefully. And you can go right through this timing bracket that can stay there for now. Take that off. Once that's loose, you should be able to do it by hand. Slide that bolt out. I can take this bracket off very gently, grab the gear. If there's a little bit of tension on the gear, you can take the wrench and just move it slightly. And you should be able to slide the gear off. Be careful because there could be a little bit of tension behind this. And slide the chain off. There's the actuator. If you were going to do the exhaust actuator instead of the intake actuator, you can do the same procedure. Just take off this gear instead of this gear. Or if you're doing both, you can do them both now at this point. Before we put this back together, put the new gear on, what you want to do is take the time and chain. We're going to want to rotate it. There is marks on the timing chain. You may have to use, adjust the um, 
the guide. Move the guide a little bit because it might get stuck on there. But we're trying to find the timing marks. There's one of the timing marks. We're looking for the other one. It goes up top. And there's the other one. That needs to line up with that arrow right there. And then we put the other cam gear on. This one's going to line up with the other arrow. And then make sure underneath is going to line up with the dot or the timing mark down below. This slides out a little bit if you have to adjust. And then you want this, you see where that mark is, and that needs to line up with that timing mark on the chain. So it should be all set right there. The easy way to keep this all timed in incorrect spaces is just take some foam, a couple pieces of foam on both sides, and that's just gonna keep everything lined up in time to make sure that there's no tension on the chain up here for when you slide it up, up top. So that looks good. Now I take the sprocket. I'm gonna line those time, timing marks up. Right in the middle. So that arrow goes right for that black key, aside of the two yellow ones. Get a line up. On the back side of it, you can see there's a pin. Let me just take this off so you can see. There is a pin, and that's going to line up with the slot on the cam. So that's not all the way on yet. So I'm just going to rotate the cam a little bit. Try to get that to line up. lined up. Now I can put my tool back on. You have to rotate it a little bit to get everything to line up. Now make sure your timing bracket is lined up and then the timing marks are lined up with the chain right there, right there, and then down below as well. Take the new bolts, get that started. With that bolt in there, we are not going to torque this yet. We're going to put the tensioner in first on the back side before we actually torque that. If you took off the exhaust actuator too, you, you're going to want to torque that as well. Take the tensioner and there's snap ring right here. Use some snap ring pliers. Take this snap ring off. Pull this out. Now what we need to do is, you can use a screwdriver or just try to use your fingers and twist this in. We have to get this locked down. So just holding this, you should be able to twist this in. Just keep spinning it. And it will lock into place just like that. And we can slide this back in. the snap ring. Now slide the snap ring back in place. Make sure it's all the way snapped in. That's good. That should look like that versus this. Now we can install it in the vehicle. Now I take the tensioner, get it lined up in the back. You want to torque this tensioner to 55 foot pounds. It's not the easiest to get a torque wrench in there, so do the best you can. 
Good. Now where you need to release the tension on the tensioner, how it's locked in place. Basically, it's like pulling a grenade pin if you're used to that style tensioner. So I have a screwdriver just with a little foot on it, rubber foot. That's just gonna prevent any damage to the chain. And just right up against the chain where the guide is, just push in. And then release. And that should release the tension on the chain. It should be all set. Now we wanna to torque the bolts for the cams to 22 foot-pounds and then an additional 100 degrees. If you don't have a torque angle meter, do the best you can. And we should be all set to slide this bracket off. that. Make sure you can always double check your timing marks. They should be good. Now you can take these foam pieces out. If you want to, you can just take and rotate the engine slightly. If you want to go around a couple times, that's fine. But your timing marks are not going to line up again. You would have to spin the motor over about 80 times before they line up again. So don't worry about that if they don't line up. Just as long as the chain isn't hopping off right now, you're good. That looks good. Now just clean up this area where the gasket's gonna go. Just use some rags and some brake parts cleaner. Should be fine. Take the new gasket. You wanna make sure you cut right there. There is gonna be that little brace that goes across there. Just trim that before you install this. Otherwise, you have to take off that engine bracket and it's gonna be a lot more time. Cutting this is not gonna affect the sealing ability of the gasket. It's plenty strong, so don't worry about that. Slide this back over. good. Take this bolt out. Make sure you don't spin the crank when you're doing it. Didn't even move. And just take some brake parts cleaner and clean the back side of the cover. It's always a good idea to replace that seal while you take this out. Don't forget to put this spacer on. Slide that on before you put the cover on. Now slide the cover in place. Get this bolt lined up. Get that one started. Tighten it down. Put the other bolts in. Get all those started. Tighten these all down. Put the tensioner in. Slide it in position. There is a pin that has to line up with the slot. Make sure you line that up. You just rotate it back and forth till you find it. And snug this down. Good and tight. Now take the pulley, line this up. Might have to spin it a few times. That's lined up. And take the new bolt, get that started. We need to torque this crank bolt, but there is an actual special tool you can use to hold the crank pulley. I don't have one, so we're gonna have to use a different method. The other method we could do is take out the starter, it's over here, and just put a screwdriver or a pry bar in between the 
flywheel to prevent the flywheel from spinning and tighten down the bolt. Now I'll just use a pry bar and just slide it right there. That should be good. And then we can torque the crank bolt. We're going to torque that to 100 foot-pounds first. After that, we want to go an additional 100 degrees. All right, that's good enough. And now we can put that starter back in position. Overall, it didn't take too much to just take that out real quick. Put the belt on, slide it up. Try to go over the alternator first, around the AC compressor. On the back side of the tensioner. And use your socket, your ratchet for the tensioner. Loosen up the tension and put the belt around the crank pulley. Double check, make sure everything's good, looks good. And put the cover on. Put the push pins in. Take this chain guide, line that up. Get those two bolts started. Tighten those down. This bracket's gonna go on the back. Take the two bolts, get those started. Take a little brake parts cleaner and a rag and just wipe down where the surface of the gasket's gonna go for the valve cover. You want to replace the valve cover gasket with a new one. Take this off just like this. Spray some brake clean down. You want to do the same with the outside gasket as well. Take the new gasket, line it up, and just push it down just like that. Make sure it's all the way down, all the way around. That looks good. Now we can slide it in place. Make sure you don't pinch any wires. Make sure the gasket doesn't fall out either. There's a couple pins that need to line up, so make sure those pins line up. Put all the bolts back in. Tighten these down. I'm going to tighten the ones in the center first and work my way out just to tighten the cover down evenly. Plug the connectors in for the VVTs. This one with the purple on it goes to the black, and then the gray one goes to the gray. Put all the coils back in. Put the bolts in, tighten them down. Plug them in and lock them down. Now this bracket right here, we need to slide that solenoid on it, the purge solenoid valve. 
but you just need to bend this bracket back a little bit. Just use a straight blade screwdriver. Just bend that tab back. That way the solenoid can come on here, just slide on and lock in place. Now you can connect the tube that goes all, to, all the way to the back, lock it down, push this connector on, and slide this one in place. Just lock it down. Take the air box, slide it in position. two bolts, get those lined up. Tighten those down. Put the cover on. Just pull the oil cap off first. Make sure it's lined up. Push it down, put the cap back on. Slide this in position. Slide it over the throttle body. The grommets in the back. Make sure those line up with the bracket. I'm gonna have to make sure those line up first. And then the throttle body. It's all lined up. Straight blade screwdriver and tighten it down. Don't forget to connect the mass airflow sensor. Tighten this worm clamp down. Put this pipe back in position. Slide that through the grommet. And through the air box, just like that. Connect the battery. Tighten it down. Snug, just make sure the connector is tight. Put that cover on. And then there should be a bracket right here. Slide the computer onto the bracket, slide it back, put this bolt through the bracket. Snug it down.